We are back on Morning Line. Man, all kinds of innovative ideas coming from this guy. I love it, <laughs> man. It's true, man. That, the thing about you is you've been in this business, Sheriff Darren Hall, um, for years, obviously. And you've know, been sheriff now for years. But, I mean, you're always looking at ways to do things better. I never see you resting on your laurels or saying, let's stay status quo. And, and that's good. You're always looking for something, man. Yeah, we got some great people, though. I mean, a lot of these things, are, we, we spent a lot of time years ago on this, you know, part-time program. We, we got an intern to help us from Trevecca. Spent two years studying why people don't take their pension. Yeah. Um, what, something, I love this kind of stuff, but something that came out of that was people don't take their pension in this line of work because they don't want to lose their identity and they can't afford to lose their income. I mean, no one makes 100% of your right. salary. Right. So we said, let's figure a way to make both of those happen. We don't want you to lose your identity. So you're, you're still working. And here. I just want to be clear, we'll take, we got another call here, but you know, you're, you're already doing what he was suggesting in the last break within the sheriff's department you have the power to do that unto yourself and it's working so you have a template there it's whether or not the chief or the mayor would like to look at it as the city more as a whole yes and, um, and again you know, we, we haven't found a flaw I mean our, our employees love it we still see them there I always tell people they have the biggest smile in the whole agency and yeah. those, those staff do because they're working 19 hours they're making the same money virtually they deserve it they've earned it yeah, the, they, they maintain their identity they, they have a the purpose they enjoy doing this right. And, and, and right they have skills that's why I was worried or think about when people retire and I know with age maybe some of your skills deteriorate a little bit right. here or there right. but all that incredible experience out the door and gone and maybe replaced by someone young who's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed but doesn't know what the heck they're doing you know it's just funny if you could mesh that more you know and what happens Nick typically that person goes to Home Depot nothing wrong with Home Depot yeah. but they've given that identity up they're now starting all over Something and what we're new. saying is stay here all that that law enforcement right. experience. Right. I mean, all right, let's go next to Ray. Ray, good morning. Hi, Ray. Yeah, I want to be the first to encourage the sheriff to run for governor when he gets <laughs> his terms up in office. And the reason I'm saying this is because of what he said a while ago. We have become, we are becoming a government of the government, by the government, and part of the government. When we should have become a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And I hope he runs for governor when he gets out of office. I'll try to be one of the first to vote for him and help him any way I can. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you for your Thank call, you, Ray. Sir. Got my hands full, so I hope. Uh, but I appreciate Ray. <laughs> Who knows and again, what the future holds with the well, show? Well, <laughs> I used to tell people I like I like watching the ship turn. I like <laughs> to know that the grass has been mowed, and so we uh, we've had a lot of issues. You know, I won't back to Vicky for a second. I mean, I want to make sure that I, I say this. We have a thousand employees, and we're going to have people who mess up. I'm going to mess up. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no secret about it. And um, uh, I, I don't. That doesn't. You know that doesn't scare me to know that we're going to have to deal with people who mess up. That doesn't mean they're bad people. Quite frankly, they screw up because I've had them look at me in the face and say, "You know, I just screwed up. Yeah. I blew it. Right. Uh, you know, it was a bad day, and I did something wrong." And and for those of us who see that, I believe in redemption. I believe we're trying yeah. to help fix people. That's our line of work. So why would we lose our employees that are willing to admit their mistakes and keep going? But we do have to do that, and and we will continue to do it. But I. I um, I enjoy I love what we're doing trying to get some things done I mean I've, I've got I've told everybody but it, it's it's an all-star team of people we have the best in the country doing what they do and I get to ride you know I, yeah. I really get to ride along and watch some incredible people and and we we um, you know I think I think we've we've done some good things but we need we have a lot to do let's take a call from Evan Evan good morning hi Evan hello Evan Yes. The first two times I was in jail, I was at CJC, and everyone got bus jobs. We got lasers several times a month. When you went to court, the guards would ask you if you like to shave to look good for court. But the third time I was at CBC, and the guards said, we get bus jobs and someone goes home. We got lasers less often. When I would go to court, I'd ask for laser, and the guards would say no. Why are there less resources? For the convicted than for the charged. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, I think where I think the question was why are there less resources for the convicted than the charged? There's not, shouldn't be less resources, but there are rights that are differently. I mean, you have rights mm -hmm. that as a as a obviously a person who's not been proven who's guilty accused, yeah. is different. Um, but but I, I'm not real sure what Evans pointing to. I, I'll tell you this: there there are several ways that those things happen. If you're indigent. Um, then, then obviously we're providing you all of your your hygiene items. Mm -hmm. That's what you would want us to do. We do that. If you have money, uh, it is on you to pay for some of those items through the commissary.
necessary, just like we would in the free world, and especially once convicted. And so I'm not sure if some of that's the case. If you're indigent, Evan, in, in the jail system, clearly we're responsible to give you many of the things that you and I need for our daily life. But once you are able to afford that, i.e. you have money on your account, and again, we're talking about razors and we're talking about stuff that's basic, uh, just like it would be for me if I went to a, you know, a hotel or went to a camp or went somewhere else that I'm paying for, then, then the taxpayers expect you to have to pay for that, but not to deny someone who doesn't have the money. So I'm not sure if that's what happened to you. Maybe the resources that you had were used on food and snacks and other things, and, and maybe razor wasn't in the list. Or if there's something we did wrong, it's, it's, I'd love for you to call me let me know when that happened, and I'd, I'd look into it. But I, uh, uh, we, we shouldn't change anything because you're convicted, except there are some rights that you give up uh, that we can't, for example, we can't force people to work or go to treatment unless you're convicted. And if you're convicted, we can assign you to various mm -hmm. things to have you work and do things. But, uh, and there's others, you know, once you're a convicted right. person. But, um, but I, we should not deny you access to a razor. Uh, and again, the only thing I'm aware of is indigency versus your own resources. Right, I got gotcha. you. I'm wondering, um, when people come to your jail now and if they're in visitation, is it over closed circuit TV or are they face to face through glass? Both. Okay. Um, if you're a maximum custody inmate, and in, in the high profile mm -hmm. cases, they're all under on a video. Oh, meaning that they'll go to it in front of a little camera, yeah. kind of like yeah. a Skype or closed circuit TV outside their cell, and then. I would sit yes. in a room where there's a TV monitor, and they'd see me, and I'd see them, and there'd be a little screen in the bottom where I see myself yes. and vice versa, yes. and you're talking back and forth that way. Those are the high-profile cases, quite frankly, because of where we're located now out there. You know, the, the Will it be different when they move here, or um, is it, is it yes. going to be mostly closed-circuit TV as opposed uh, no, to the it, glass and the it, partition? It'll be visit, uh, personal visitation, except for those that are on disciplinary segregation, those who have had, had problems and, and what we call privileges taken away. Okay. Um, the issues out there, ranking these high-profile cases, we, we don't want to move them how far it takes to get to the visitation room out into the public and back um, just for routine visits. So all the high profile maximum custody inmates are via video. When they come down here, we have access to do both. We have plenty of visitation rooms and we will have the video capability as well. Okay. Um, you know, the That's future wondering. future yeah. of visitation, I believe, is going to be more video, not because... A lot of the jails, other right. jails, smaller ones, that's all it is. I, I was in the Dixon County Jail and that's the way it was set up. I mean, you just set up visitation, you go, and no one's even really there. I mean, it's, it's secure and you walk in and you just look and there's a TV monitor on. You go and sit down in front of it. Next thing you know, the inmate's in front of you and you're talking See, between... The, uh, on TV to each other. The next generation, Nick, really what I think is going to change it all, I have a 24-year-old, 17-year-old son, I can talk this way, but yeah. they would know how to answer a phone and come to a visitation yeah. room. I mean, they, they talk to their friends and family on games and on sure. phones, and so it's very common for them. I'm still not real comfortable with doing the face stuff on mm -hmm. phones and all as a, as a person. But the future of visitation is going to go to the Internet, and when it gets there, you'll walk upstairs in your own office and hit a button and want to communicate with an inmate, and you can do that. I, meaning that I wouldn't have to go all the... For instance, you're, you're your inmates, not that they have access to do that now, but they all have little computers, don't tablets, they? Right. Little tablets right. to entertain themselves, right. and there's a lot of limits on that, and I think it's worked out well, hasn't right. it? Right. It's a good thing, right. but I mean, yeah, I think you're right. At some point, if there's, the, you'll have to schedule it, and that inmate will have a certain right. de time and date and when they know they're going to talk to you. You don't have to go down and you there. Don't have to, because, see, think about it. I don't philosophically have a problem with it. If you drive all the way to Dixon oh, yeah. to go into a booth, and all you end up with is a camera to look yep. to, why did you have to go that far just to get behind the screen? Exactly. I, you're, you're exactly right. And, and that's if I live even near enough to drive. There are some right. inmates that may have family members in California. That's right. And so they can't come out all the time. Well, they can just turn yeah, it up there. And keep in mind, been... by the way, everything when it is on closer, everything's recorded. Right. right. Everything's recorded on right. the phone calls, which Except of course they the can legal still visits. do. <laughs> Except the legal visits. Of that. Right. By the way, uh, Emmanuel Sampson, um, last high profile inmate, convicted, uh, gone. Is he already been placed I'm in the Is he sure. still in your jail if I'm you're not? I'm quite sure okay. that he's gone. By now he would be, I would think. Probably. Yeah, I would. me too. I, I don't remember exactly with the dates, but I, I'm quite sure he's already gone. Okay, Travis Ranking still there. Yes. Of course, uh, waiting to see what develops on that front. I'm trying to think if there are any other high-profile inmates that have come in there right now. There for a while we had, of course, we had the Dixon. He's gone now, but um, right. we Wiggins, had several folks there all at one there. time. Sometimes you'll keep inmates for other counties. Oh, well, in that case, right. you're not going to put Wiggins in the Dixon County Jail because right. he's accused of murdering a deputy there. Right. There, there are obvious reasons why that would be a very uncomfortable situation for the sheriff and his staff, though I'm sure they'd be professional, but they're yeah. looking at a man accused of killing one of their own. So that, that's pretty much standard, isn't it, yeah. that 
that guy's got to go somewhere else. Because yeah, I mean, if you remember, I mean, I actually called Sheriff Bledsoe and said, look, when, when, when you catch him, you know, if everything, you know, if you want to do this, you, you got a place to send him, don't worry about it. Because if you remember, they had, they had been through a, a oh, tough few months of yes. everything, and now they're out. Look, so then you lose one of your own and the emotions around all that. And we lost one in 95, I will never forget. And I didn't even think about it, you know, so happy to have the person apprehended that did it and just kind of more make sure that the community was, was at peace at that time. But the thing you don't realize is the first time the meal's not warm, then you're going to be alleged to have mistreated him. The first right, thing so it's goes just wrong, not you, worth you're never dealing going with that because people expect me. By the way, just as we wrap things up, the uh, the teen that is accused in the in the death of uh, mm. Officer Anderson mm. in Metro, still, I guess, in juvenile detention, and it will be the juvenile court judge sometime in the coming weeks who will decide whether or not she will be tried as an adult. If that decision is made prior to that trial, but if she says, yes, she will be transferred, does that mean she will physically be moved from juvenile detention to somewhere in your facility? She would, but now I've only heard this rumor I'm not sure I heard she will be 18 in a month yeah she's very close to being 18 so once all that happens she's the adult would come to us she would not stay there automatic even if whatever happens if she turns 18 now she still could be tried as a juvenile couldn't she She could but housing of her now that she's 18 would move to the would adult automatically system. move right, to you regardless right, right. Yeah, and you're right. She, her birthday was coming up. So, yeah. Sheriff Hall, as always, a pleasure. Uh, thank it's you good very to see much. You, and you as well. He's a good egg. <laughs> all right, yeah, he's got uh, all his friends. That he, let's just say he comes with an entourage. Oh, that's no, not true. That's <laughs> not true. M Mark, Mark to, gets the facts. Mark's so. here today. <laughs> Carla's off. Good to have you on. We'll see you again thank in you. a month. Thank I'll you be back much. with a programming note about tomorrow right after this. Stay with us.